Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my second video. Uh, in the previous video, which I highly recommend you watch, I'll link it in the description below. We talked about uh, the introduction to the series, the introduction to this channel, and how I'm going to be doing this kind of thing. So please do watch it. Uh, so as I said, I'll link it down in the description. Now, last time we talked about my ball points because um, we didn't really go into much detail. It turned out to be a 25 minute long video though, but still. Uh, ball points are rubbish. <laughs> so we'll go into the fountain pens now. And as I said, I'm going to do it in order of when I acquired them and when I reacquired them. Because some of them, for example, this pen here, I've had way before the pen we're going to do today, which is this one. However, I recently reacquired it after this one. This is the first one I acquired after my knowledge of pens was actually any good. And this here is a cross century from the 80s. So it's an older one compared to the newer style one, so they don't really make it like this anymore. And um, this is the first pen I actually found decently. So I was browsing the subreddit, uh, r slash oddly satisfying, and somebody posted a video of somebody with a flex nib fountain pen. I believe it was a Pilot Falcon. I was like, that's really cool. And then somebody in the description linked down below the r slash fountain pen subreddit, and I kind of followed down the um the rabbit hole that way and i've been looking uh, i was looking for a pen this was back in um november of 2017 so i was looking for one and there was this weird box thing and it had like two sections one like paper clips the other one had like a uh, big crystal uh wooden pencil and it had this here mechanical pencil cross again from the same uh, pen roll we had this then which I'm also going to talk about today as well. And it had this pen in it. I was like, oh, a pen. Um, obviously, this one was cool because it's a mechanical pencil, but then I was looking for it and I found this and it had a cap. And obviously, it has a cap. It might be a fountain pen. I did it. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous fountain pen nib. And that's the first time I've shown a fountain pen nib on the uh, YouTube channel. So it's kind of a relief instead of having to look at awful ballpoints all day. So without further ado, let's get into the review of sorts. We'll put that aside just for now. Uh, so as you can see this pen is made of chrome, I believe it's stainless steel, but then chrome plated. However, the scratches here kind of indicate otherwise, possibly, because you kind of see some like brassing coming through, which is interesting. Same with the clip as well, I don't know if you can see that. We'll start at the top here with the finial, just black with a weird dot on top that looks quite scratched. It looks like it might have been golden once, because on the top of these two. Um, don't know if you can see that they're gold and shiny but it was like that when i got it so that's fine the whole body is kind of covered in scratches but i kind of like that kind of aesthetic it it was it was a lot shinier when i first had it however oops um when i carried it as an everyday carry every day in my pocket it kind of got beaten up because i carried these two together that was kind of a mistake I didn't have like one of these pen sleeves or anything so that was definitely a mistake on my part, but I kind of like the look. Now there's some more deeper grooves, which I just showed earlier. That's that's a good example, um, which go down to the bare metal. And that's um, because somebody's uncapped the pen. Obviously they go posted. I don't, I hate going posted, but they've obviously, you can see that the scratches go even deeper. So that's enough to keep it so it doesn't fall off. Someone's obviously pushed it even further, I'm not going to demonstrate that. And they've scratched the chrome, which is a real shame. But as I said, that was not me, because I'd never go posted in my pens. I just find it a lot more comfortable. It's already a well-weighted pen, because it's uh, made of metal, especially when you've got a spare cartridge in it. So there's also some notation here. It says cross in italics, and then made in Ireland, uh, either side of that, which is kind of interesting, because all the other cross pens I have uh, say cross in standard writing and they say like um, made in Ireland underneath or silver plated for that one for example because that's the silver plated mechanical pencil this is just chrome uh, so that's interesting to note it says cross in a nice bold capital font with two bullet points before and after and it's a nice very nice design clip smooth then tapers down like that quite sturdy as well so it's not going to fall out of a pocket or anything which is good. The overall design of this pen is very nice. It's straight in the middle from this point up until here, and then at these points where you see there's quite a bit of wear, that's obviously the most 
a highly contacted point because it tapers down. As it tapers down like this, the end just goes to a nice flat surface. Very nice, aesthetically pleasing pen. And I don't know if you noticed before that there are striations that go down or pin stripes. When I first got this pen, I was actually quite confused because as you can see, the pin stripes go, 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 and then just stop. And they start again, which doesn't match up to the underside. I don't think these are matched up in the first place anyway. I thought it was a misprint. I thought that the gap was supposed to go with the clippers. However, I more recently learned that actually that's where you put um, um, personalization engraving, like your name or your monogram or something right there. That's fairly interesting. I, I didn't know that up until recently. But yeah, so there's a blank space. I'm not sure if it's that easy to tell, but there's definitely one there. And it's like that with all my other cross pens, place for you to engrave your name, for example. Now, I've already shown the um, nib, but I'll just show it again. Nice little band here on the section. Unfortunately, the section is really scratched, as you can see. Now that's probably due to daily wear, but it's also due to capping and uncapping it very often. Now when I first got this pen, the capping was very tight, like it was really hard to uncap. And when you did, it was so tight, it actually pulled a vacuum on the nib, pulling ink from behind there and also out of the nib slit as well. And that caused some issues where the ink would stay in the cap and then eventually go back onto the section and get ink on it. But now it's much looser. Not loose enough for it to not be able to clip into your pocket and take out and then the pen just stay behind. It's not that loose, but it's still a lot looser than it was before. And my current uh, daily usage gold um, filled version of this pen. Um, section, like so, tapers down ever so slightly and then flares out at the end with a nice angular design. Now, this is actually how the cap mechanism works. I'm doubting you're going to be able to see inside that, but that's how it works. It clips onto this bit, which is nice. Nib is not gold, it's just steel, which is gold plated. Cross uh, engraving, I don't know if you can see that, I don't think it's in focus. Um, cross engraving, it says medium. Medium point uh, steel nib. Very interesting design. It looks kind of like a Lamy nib, but it's not, so it's very interesting. Um, feed doesn't have any visible fins on the outside, just flat, and then a hole obviously for where you fill up if you used a converter, and then two gaps for the nib to become out. The nib is removable, but the feed is not. So that's very nice. It's currently inked up with cross black ink in the form of, I'll just take that off actually, may as well. Um, in the form of cartridges, I've got, oh, it's looking a bit low. I have to replace that at some point. But um, just standard cross black cartridges and I, it's long enough to keep a spare one as well. Back in there. Fits in nicely. Screws down, just standard. Proprietary, oh, I just knocked the camera again. Proprietary cross cartridge. Now when I first got this pen, it really confused me because I'd done some research before online about different um, filling systems. Obviously this one is a cartridge converter pen. And on the Goulet Pens website, there is a little help guide and shows you what brands use proprietary cartridges or converters. Now Cross use a proprietary ca uh, cartridge, as you can see. By well, taking that out, that does not look like a regular one. It kind of looks like a rocket. I say that because uh, in my physics class, the lecturer drew um, a rocket on the board and I held this on and was like, hmm, shocking resemblance. This is a standard international cartridge, as you can see, a lot different. Doesn't have these steps and obviously the end is completely different. This one's a much larger hole than this one. Now, when I first got the pen, I'll just set that aside. Um, when I unscrewed it, obviously there was no cartridge in the pen. When I unscrewed it, this, well, not this exact one, but a standard international empty, dry, standard international cartridge came out. And it came out this the way I pulled it out, so it just fell out like that. And the barrel, inside of the barrel, and the inside of the section was smothered with ink. I was like, oh, that's not very good, is it? So either it was an empty one, and they just shoved it in there for storage, which you can do like you do with the full one, or it had just been placed in completely and utterly wrong. Now, unfortunately, because it's a metal pen, I don't know if you can see the inside there very well, 
ink and metal don't really go well together. That's why you can't eyedropper a pen like this, even though it's sealed at the end. Luckily, the barrel has no damage at all, but the inside of the section does, which is a real shame. Um, it already had that corrosion in it, um, and there's nothing you can do about that because the ink was just smothered inside it. Um, so I was cleaning it out, and then I just looked inside with a, a torch, and um, that's about it, a torch, yeah. And uh, it was just all corroded. I was like, okay, that's fine. Even though I gave it a good thorough clean. I keep knocking this camera, sorry about that. Um, and unfortunately, I was really confused about that. So obviously I didn't have any cross cartridges about, up until October actually. But I had three of these style ones, just three of them, just found around the house. Just three. And now, I don't know if you know what a compass is, not the device used to measure um, your direction. The device used to draw a circle with a pencil has a sharp point in it. So I just stabbed that into there so it was open and then shoved it in as far as I could as to not get any leak. It didn't actually leak at all, which is really good. I don't know how that worked, but it didn't actually leak because I believe the end of it was just touching the post on the back of the feed. Um, but obviously it wouldn't wrap around it so it wouldn't get punctured itself excuse me um, so yeah that's about it and I had to use three of those and I was like oh god what am I going to do when I run out but luckily when I found this pen um, which also uses standard international cartridges which is where I got this one from I don't know why I keep all my cartridges I just do it was in a pencil case which is just full of these, absolutely f about, uh, I would say about 20 of them, which is really, really a relief, um, because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get any. And I managed to use the pen all the way up until October. Now, that was again with more supplementary standard initial cartridges, which I found when I got this pen from the bin in college. I'll talk more about that when I get to that pen, which is quite late on in the series actually but I'll tell you about that when I get it. it there was also a tin just full of these as well as a couple of Parker standard cartridges as well so like I said they corroded the inside I probably helped aid the corrosion further but it operates completely fine now with um, the standard cross cartridges or the converters now like I said I didn't get actually get proper cross stuff um, for this pen until October early October where I bought a converter bottle of Waterman Serenity Blue, which I can just grab out now for you, if you don't know what that looks like. Nice, juicy bottle of ink, like so. Excuse that, it's just my phone going off. Let's pop that away. And then I also bought a bunch of cartridges as well to go with it, this is the back pack. Um, so, excuse me while I just close the drawer there. And so now I've actually got real stuff to go in it, so it works even better now. It's even wetter because uh, the ink can get through the feed a lot more efficiently. That pretty much just sums up this pen, to be honest. Unfortunately, more recently, the nibs had some issues, actually. The tines are perfectly aligned. But however, there is a strange scratching whenever I write with it could be in any direction, up, down, left, right, diagonally, any direction when I write with it, which is kind of strange. Like, the times are perfectly aligned. It hadn't done this before, only up until recently. I don't know if it's something to do with the ink that I've been using, the cross black, but I'm not entirely sure. That is this pen. Now, like I said, with the this pen, I also found this one, which is the one I actually found first. This is It's a mechanical pencil, as you can see. Uh, this one's a screw type instead of a push type, which is interesting because I haven't seen one like this before. But again, I guess it goes with the ballpoint, which is also a screw type ballpoint. It says cross and it says silver plated. I'm not sure how well you can read that. My lighting is probably, if I just angle that down a bit, probably be easy to read. No, probably just made it worse. I'll put that back. Um, but it says silver plated and this is made in Ireland again, which is what the other pens kind of have, just standard flat writing, excuse me, my tripod's in the way there. Whereas this one has the italic writing, which is interesting. Like I said, it also has that gap uh, in the stripes for your um, your name, if you want to get that engraved. Very similar clip. 
excuse my phone going off again, sorry about that. Um, actually slightly shorter. The whole pen in the end is actually quite, sh uh, is longer than the pencil. I'll go on to that when I go on to the, um, the gold filled founder pen, which is the last one in the series so far. Um, the fact that this pen is actually longer than all the rest of them, and this is actually the standard size it's supposed to be. But I'll go into that when I go for that pen. So, like I say, similar clip, very nice, springy. I'm not sure if this is solid silver clip or is it silver plated again, because there's a lot of tarnishing under there. I don't know if you can see that, and I couldn't get that off with the silver polishing cloth. When I first found it, there were spots of black all over it. It was very tarnished. It was also quite scratched already. But not scratched as it was when I got it, I had it in my pocket with the other one. That was such a silly move of me. But like I say, it was tarnished, had a little silver polishing cloth, managed to get most of the spots off apart from around there. I'm not sure if you can see that slightly darker around the top of the clip. That was probably the hardest part to clean. So like I said, twist mechanism. When I first found it, and we just um, twist that and then that comes out. It actually fires out the end, so I don't want it to... There you go, see? <laughs> Um, in the end, watch when I um, do that, a little plastic, uh, not plastic, metal cube comes at the end. I'm not sure how well you can see that. And that's not lead at all, because it retracts back when you continue clicking. I was really confused. I was like, um, there's no lead in it. How do I fill this? Obviously, where do I get lead for this thing? Pull the back off. Obviously, that was very stiff when I first had it. I was like, okay, I don't really want to do that, but... As you can see, it says, I'm not sure if you can see it, it says use cross lead. And then 0.9 millimeters, which is good. A little eraser on the top, and usually you move the eraser and then put the uh, lead in the end. And lo and behold, there was two sticks of lead in there. Not that you can probably see that. When I first had it, there was about six sticks of lead. Now there's only, there was actually five. Now there's two in there. I've used two. I've used, yes, I've used two, and there's half of one in here. So there was five. Was there? Does that make sense? I don't know. I don't think it does. Yes, it would have done. And I was like, but there's lead in there. How come it's not working? I just kept twisting and twisting and twisting. Nothing was coming out. Then I realised that, um, if I get it right, so it comes out and then snaps back. Don't know how well you can see that. Then when it snaps back, stop and then push it in and then twist anti-clockwise until you feel a jump. And continue twisting the end, and you can see it pulls in at its own strength and doesn't fall out. So that's how you load this pencil, by the way. Also, just a few interesting design aspects the fact that the pen is a whole lot thinner, it starts to taper down. This one starts to taper down here, so it starts to taper down towards the end. So, obviously, you hold it there because it was your thinner. Pen, you don't want to start tapering down from there, it'll be extremely thin by the time you do. I can't, sorry, I can't really fit all this in the frame of the camera, can I? Unless I do a landscape. There you go. Interesting thing about the end of the finial, actually. Um, no, nothing on the end, and it's got a random silver bit there as well, which is very interesting. None of the other ones have that. Just a uh, forward point that out. Excuse me again. Um, as you can see, the other ones just have black. These both have dots on the top, both shiny, like I said earlier. This one has a matte one, but it probably was shiny at some point. And this one doesn't have a dot at all. So that's very interesting. All have different interesting design aspects. And when I went through the ballpoint video, if you've seen it, should have seen it already. That one had a floral pattern and, of course, no clip at all. So that's basically these pens. The uh, fan pen, which is obviously the main thing whenever, and the uh, mechanical pencil. And because I found these both at the same time, I thought I'd just include the mechanical pencils as well. Not that really this video is about mechanical pencils, but still. That's the pen. Very nice. My daily writer all the way up until this November. Well, November 2018. It's now 2019 as of recording this. Sorry, I just moved the camera there. Um, like I say, now 2019 we're recording this. I've had the gold filled one here, which is now my daily writer since uh, late November, which is a pretty much a year and two days after I got this one, which is uh, interesting. But obviously that's the last one in the series so far. And you will have to wait and see to get this one. So yeah, that's um, enough about this pen. I did say I would do a writing sample, but unfortunately no, because my hand I just decided my handwriting is absolutely terrible. 
and you probably won't be able to read it. This video is already lengthy at 20 minutes, just gone. So I think I'm probably going to end it there. Um, if you did make it this far in the video, all the way up to 20 minutes, uh, comment down below in the in the comment section. Ball points suck because they just do. I just want to see how many people actually watch this video and how many people actually watch all the way to the end. So at the end of the video, comment ball points suck. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.